Hey guys, Darren here. Welcome to Mayhem Country Living. Working my butt off outside, top side. <sighs> Cutting grass. Uh, uh, the backyard is kind of tedious uh, because I have to cut around some of the raised beds and the garden areas and around the freaking pool. But um, it's okay. Uh, so it's been a busy day and I'm doing a little bit of fun work as well. But I wanted to just kind of touch base with you guys and let you know what all's going on. The stuff you're going to see is stuff I'm going to be doing videos on later on this weekend as I get the freaking time. We're going to uh, do a lot of videos this weekend. But uh, the fun part is we're going to see the new Jurassic Park movie this weekend. Shortly. And, uh, we're actually going to have popcorn. And, uh, well, no, I won't have a soft drink without soft drinks, but, uh, they'll have popcorn and soft drinks. But, I want to show you. <sighs> Getting the hydroponic system ready and set up. Uh, filled it up yesterday. If you watched any of the uh, videos, the water's warming up. Um, and it is off gassing. Uh, uh, the uh, municipality that does our water uses chlorine, so it will off gas uh, probably by the end of the day, which is pretty good for what I want. There's the pump. I aerate it. There's my stones. Uh, they are disinfecting because you need to do that periodically if you have algae. <sighs> Let's go upstairs. It's been a day, guys. The good thing I can tell you is I'm wearing pants. There we go. Because sometimes I get up and go outside and start working in the yard. I'm wearing boxers, of course. But I'll show you what we're working with. It's just been a busy, busy, crazy, crazy day. Uh, the hooch, that is my wife, she is off helping our, our son paint. Uh, his house. Oh, they just bought a property. And I'm going to show you all the crazy, crazy stuff that's going on uh, in the garden. Tomatoes. These are the ones I rehabbed. Look at them. Ain't they pretty? These are the ones I just grew from seed. Uh, these are Romas. These are... Oh, acorn squash. Good googly moogly. I gotta get these plant guys planted. Uh, this is the behind the scenes area you don't see very often. Um, aloe vera, aloe vera, aloe vera, aloe vera. And then we have a bunch of uh, mosquito plants and then we have uh, purslane or portulaca. Which, hang on, my wife gets pissed whenever I do this. See this right here? Let's see. right here so freaking good you ever had a salad with this stuff some dirty rice man it's so good highest plant in omega oils that you will find man that stuff's so good now onions uh, that's not corn that's a leek that's oregano an oregano monster. Um, parsley. It's a lot of parsley. The deal, it's going to seed. I'm getting ready to make some uh, uh, vinegar for my uh, friends and family. Purple basil. It's beautiful. This stuff goes good in salads. Man, it's so freaking good. Rosemary, rosemary. My grandson's dartboard that we just put up. We have fun with it. That is the pool from hell. Oh, it's cleared up completely. All kinds of crap growing in it. Um, garlic, strawberries, onions, geraniums. I wish these things would hurt and flower because uh, I want to show my grandsons 
Uh, the uh, rabbit eye blueberries are doing great. Uh, tomatoes are uh, a little over six feet. I'm a short fella, about five eight. And that's uh, a little bit taller than me. Um, we are on the way. Uh, more tomatoes. More tomatoes. More tomatoes. Some tomatoes. Chickens. Lemongrass. Purple basil. These are all of our hot peppers. Those are bones. I still have to grind those things up to make my bread. No, not really. Still have to grind them up to add them to uh, uh, to amend the soil. Uh, more squash. Squash, squash, squash. Tomatillas, cucumbers. I really had bad luck with cucumbers this year so far. Cabbages are doing better. I have to say, I actually had to put down seven dust because the bugs were eating them up. I'm going to show you what we do. Squash, squash, zucchini, zucchini. Squash, I think, further back there. I just added this. This is one of the squashes that we use. And I told everybody that comes out here to pick. You leave one squash and one zucchini. Let it grow as large as it wants to. That's going to be our seed fruit. I just planted those guys yesterday. We got to water. Um, but, yeah, that thing is, oh, heck, that thing's probably two pounds. Now, uh, we got a whole lot more squash coming in. I don't want to show you this zucchini because it will make you nervous. You look at this thing. There you go. Zucchini. And I, I put everything down on straw uh, just for this reason. Good God, look at that thing. That's four pounds, probably. Now, that one is going to be all of our seed zucchini. So, one of these guys, I will put a piece of tape on, uh, mark it with a Sharpie, something like that. And those guys are left alone. That was going to be our food. No, no, no. That one is going to be our seed stock for food for the next year. Now, oh my goodness. Uh, the roses are doing great. Uh, fantastic pollinator. Oh my God, look at this stuff. This is hot. Um, these things are doing really well. And these are more of the uh, Russian sunflowers. Those are only about as half as tall as they get. They get about 12 feet. And again, I hang up. We'll walk down here, I'll show you. Sweet peppers. All of these are sweet peppers. More tomatoes. We are going to try to get about 500 pounds of tomatoes because we need them. Um, that's me. So, these things are looking great. These are tomatillas. Note the difference in the leaves. My thought is, I have, ah, oh, look at that, it's fantastic. Look at that guy. He's just, He's just hanging out. He's happy. We'll leave him alone, let him pollinate. But I think what we're looking at here, because I use six months chicken manure as well as straw, I think we're looking at an over abundance of nitrogen as opposed to an under. Because you'll note these leaves and everything down here are blotched. Gravity's working for us. The water's running down here when it rains. And show you these guys these are more green beans as well not blotched and then these are tomatillas who are up here at the these are the tomatillas who are up here at the top of the property or the garden area and they're doing fine no problem same seed um so i, I think it is related to nitrogen release i think um this guy is squash and it looks like he got squished but anyway now uh tomatoes hang on let me show you this guy i have so many freaking tomatoes coming in on this thing i bet you i have 10 pounds of tomatoes coming out on this one plant 
that's what I want. Um, Everybody asked me what are these little uh, pots for. Uh, they're frog houses, and they also help hold uh, humidity, uh, moisture. So I've got a few scattered all over the place, and you tip them up, and uh, uh, critters like to get in there, and it's really just good with pollinators. Hot pepper. Everything's doing great. I got so much to do. Um, now, walk in here with the chickens real quick because we are getting longer. There's a damn pool. Jeez. Anyway. Hey, chickens. Oh, you're all happy now that I fed you. No complaints. No grievances. Hmm. Anyway. I'll show you. These are our chickens. She's the oldest chicken that we've had. Um, she's going on five years old. She is like the grandma of everything. And if she doesn't lay, it's okay. Um, she's the oldest one we've had uh, that has lived. Uh, that I haven't eaten. Uh, egg that just drop out of their butt. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Eggs just drop out of their butt. This is where we keep all the mamas and the babies. And uh, they are out running around. You see the freaking flies? Those are flies. Those are flies. You see all the maggots? How about that? So we're going to have to set up some more stuff. Once it gets over like 85 or 90 degrees, we put the fan in here. That's what it's for, and it blows them around. These are probably the best chickens that have ever been chickened. Now, this is Mama. She's a Bantam. I do not like Bantam chickens uh, because, to me, they serve no purpose. Too small to eat, too small to lay, really. Now, they do lay, and they do eat pretty well because I ate the father of these babies. He was delicious, but he wouldn't stop crowing, screaming all over the all times of the day. So I, I ate him, and then she disappeared. And I thought, well, something probably got her. But as luck would have it, uh, she went under the house and hatched out a bunch of babies, and so these are free. And of course, they're damn bantams. Um, but that's okay. Um, they are, they call them fluffy bantams, and they actually are the exotics that have black skin, and they're valued highly in Japan, I want to say, but I just don't care because there's not a whole lot of meat on them. Um, and they lay small eggs. Where she goes. I wasn't talking about you, sweetie. I was talking about somebody else. Anyway. That is what we're dealing with. These guys are all our Brahmas. These are very, very large birds. I'll do a whole separate video on these things. Got to come out here and trim and clean up. Um, that is the chicken tent. Yes, it, it's kind of like for environmental enrichment. You, you, you see them? They're out here doing dirt baths. Uh, they're drinking. More to come. And then... What video would be complete without a look at my motley crew? <whistles> oh. Saul, Luna, Stella. Yes, they're Latin names. And then there's Tucker, and he's just kind of like me. Um, these are some of our layers of security who are weirdos. Uh, that's Tucker. He's a good dog. Had him for like seven years. He's, he's an old fella. Uh, Stella is one year. Luna is two. Saul is two, I want to say. Um, and these guys are what keeps us. And you can see way, way out there is the orchard. And I'm um, talking to the hooch. We're probably going to get a little bit more strawberries, not strawberries, I'm sorry, blueberries and some figs. Now, 
I'm okay with blueberries. I don't love them. The grandkids decided after we bought them that they love blueberries, and so they come out and pick blueberries every day. So we're gonna get another 10 uh, rabbit eye blueberry bushes. <clears throat> and uh, we're also gonna get about four or five Gosh, I can't, I can't remember. Dwarf something figs. Now, the kick in the butt, the nice thing about figs is they produce in the spring and in the fall. So if you're looking for a crop that really helps offset, now we're looking at, you know, having something that's sweet, you can make some sort of preserves out of. I hear them too, buddy, it's okay. And, uh, Pigs are not a bad uh, way to go. I, I like them, I don't hate them. And uh, it's just something that gives you a, a double blast of calories, uh, as well as sugar. Now, what can you do with them? Well, you can preserve them, you can ferment them, you can make, you could make a fig mead. Yes, you could, Stella. Um, you could absolutely do that. So it's, uh, you could trade them, swap them out. So, I mean, it's different things that you can, you, you know, that you could do. Anyway. Before we go, I want to show you this because a lot of people might not realize this. I learned this this year, um, and it's a really handy tip uh, from uh, Nicole Sauce, Living Free in Tennessee, her podcast. You have tomatoes. You, tomatoes come in two types, determinable and determinable. Uh, determinable, they all generate fruit at one time, and determinable throughout the season. So you, you'll get, instead of getting 20 at one time, for the indeterminable, you'll get two, 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 that on and on. Now, if you want a certain type of tomato to set aside for canning, freeze them. What we do, get the bread bags, fill them up with tomatoes, whether they be cherry tomatoes, romas, beef steak, uh, brandy wine, whatever flavor it is that you like. Just throw them in the freezer, pull them out, let them sit out, warm up, put them in the water to boil, Skin splits because they've been frozen. Fantastic, you can't beat it. Pretty good tip. More to come. We're gonna wrap it up now. I got so much more to do. It's gonna be a day. Take care of you people.